yeah. A major chunk of losses in electrical power system is constituted by losses incurred due to poor power factor. There have been a various ways implemented to deal with this problem for quite a long time. The main intention behind this video is to explain you people about how to do a required KVAR calculation of auto power factor connection panels in a distribution network. The merits of high power factor values include increased efficiency, load carrying capacity, better voltage regulation and a reduce in the overall billing of electricity. Power factor is defined as the ratio of active power and reactive power. Power factor gives indication of real power presence in a power system. For example, if in a system there is a 100% power and the power factor is 0.85 then it indicates that the net power in a system consists of 85% of active power and 15% of reactive power. These were some of the basics related to APFC panel. Now let's put a highlight on required KVAR calculation method. Basically there are two required KVAR calculation method. First method is classical calculation method with the help of the formulas and the second one is a simple table method with the help of a standard table for capacitor value calculation we can uh, calculate the required kvr from this method so let's uh, focus on the first method first which is a classic calculation method the formula to calculate the required kvr is required kvr is equals to p into tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 so the C is a capacitance in farad. C equals to VAR divided by 2 pi FV square. Whereas F is a frequency in Hertz. P is a real power in kilowatt. Make sure it is in kilowatt. And V is the voltage of the power system in volts. So P is the power in kilowatt. And the tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 is a multiplying factor which we have to calculate with the help of a uh, required power factor and a measured power factor of a system. Keeping this aside, let us assume that we are having a load of 100 kVA and its power factor is 0.8 which is a measured power factor and the required power factor is 0.9 so we need to improve power factor from 0.8 to 0.9 and we require a certain amount of kvr for improving this power factor so as we know that cos theta 1 equals to major power factor and cos theta 2 equals to required power factor now as we know that cos theta 1 which is measured power factor is 0.8 so we have to calculate the value of theta 1 theta 1 equals to cos inverse of 0.8 which gives us a value of 36.86 and cos theta 2 which is required power factor is 0.9 so theta 2 equals to cos inverse of 0.9 which gives us a value of 25.84 Therefore, we have got the value of theta 1 and theta 2 which will be submitted in required KVAR formula. The power value that need to be submitted in formula should be in kilowatt. So in order to convert KVA to kilowatt, we have the formula KVA equals to kilowatt divided by power factor. So kilowatt equals to KVA into power factor. As our power factor is pointed, so kilowatt is equals to 100 into 0 0.8 and we get the value as 80 kilowatt of the power. So KVR uh, required formula is as shown P into tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 submitting the value of power which is 80 kilowatt and the P value of theta 1 and theta 2 in this formula so tan 36.86 minus th tan 25.84 this gives us a value of 80 into 0.257 so 0.257 this is the multiplying factor tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 is a multiplying factor so 80 into 0.257 give us a value of 20.56 kvar which is a required kvar for improving the power factor from 0.8 to 0.9 Therefore, we have submitted a power in kilowatt and by submitting theta 1, theta 2 value, we get the multiplying factor. And by submitting these values in the formula, we get the value of the required KVAR from the first method, which is classic calculation method. Now, I am going to explain to you about the second method of KVAR calculation, which is simple table method. In this method, we are given a 
table which has a uh, multiplying factor values related to required and measured power factor so the formula for this is required kvar equals to kilowatt into table multiplier so submitting the values uh, as we have the kilowatt value as 80 and we don't have the table multiplier value so this multiplier value depends on the required power factor as we required 0.9 power factor so we can go to this table as you can see this is the table link for this is given in the description you can download it so as you can see on the left side in the yellow color this is the measured power factor or and on the red line this is the required power factor so following this we can get the multiplying factor value so as you can see we have the uh, measured power factor as 0.8 and the required power factor as 0.9 so the multiplying factor for us is 0.266 to get the value of kvar similarly if our measured power factor is 0.9 and required power factor is 1 so the multiplying factor can be find by tracing this value so 0.9 and a 1 and we get the value of multiplying factor as 0.484 so in our case as we required 0.8 to point uh, 9 power factor so we got the value of multiplying factor as 0.266 submitting this value we get the value of required kvar as 21.26 so we got the multiplying factor as 0.266 whereas in from the first calculation method we got the value as 0.257 and kvar is 20.56 and kvr here is 21.26 which is approximately similar there is not much difference this is the thumb rule method which we followed in our company for apfc panel manufacturing so for example if we have a 2500 kva transformer uh, 33 kv by 40, 440 volt supply so uh, what we can do is uh, follow this thumb rule which is very easy uh, as we know that the 40% of 2500 kva is 1000 kva so we take 30% of this as variable capacitor 30% of 2500 kva which is 750 kvar we use this as a variable capacitor during a load time which maintains the power factor to unity during the load whereas the 10 percent of this 2500 kva which is 250 kvar is a is used as fixed capacitor bank and this will be used when there is a no load so this is this fixed capacitor is used to maintain the power factor to unity under no load condition so this one is used 30 percent of kva R is used for load condition and 10% of KVR is used under no load condition. The link for the complete calculation of this method APFC panel thumb rule is given in the description. You can check it. I have done this calculation earlier in the previous video. You can check that too. That's all in this video guys. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel Electrical Infinity. Like this video and comment your opinion about how this video was and keep coming back. Take care.